What's up, Internet? Welcome back to NerdLocker.com for this week's comic book reviews. And I'm starting off with Damien, son of Batman. Number two, uh, my suspicions were correct from the last review. A uh, little spoiler here, so you might want to skip ahead a couple seconds. The Batman that dies is Dick Grayson. Now you should be good, spoiler free. So that's why we see Bruce in the Batcave throwing down with Damien. And Damien's just like, you know what? Your way has failed. I, I've been right all along. We gotta take out villains because just throwing them back in jail doesn't do anything. So they have a big throwdown and something crazy happens. Oh my God, Damien, what did you do? But he's like, you know what? I'm gonna make this right and I'm gonna restore the legacy. That is Batman and we finally get to see him don the awesome Batman 666 outfit that we saw in Morrison's run. This is essentially just a, a, a I guess like a preview of that. I wouldn't say this is a... I, a lot of people thought that this was going to be like, oh, the DC Universe with Damien in it uh, if he wasn't killed. And I mean, in a sense it is, but I feel like this is more of just that part of the Grant Morrison story of Damien becoming Batman. Uh, issue ends with a cliffhanger. I mean, it's a four-part series, so I'm sure the next two issues are going to be absolutely jam-packed. But can't wait to see what's going on. I'm giving this four to five nerd skulls. Hey there, nerds. Jim here with my review of Aquaman number 25. Now, I love this book. I thought the relaunch was fantastic. One of my favorite stories this year has been, actually, I think it was the end of last year, was Thrones of Atlantis. I absolutely love that story. Jeff Johns has nailed it out of the park. So I was really sad when he announced this one is his last issue. I really hope DC treats it well, and I'm a little nervous because it looks like they're going to do a team-up with Justice League. Nervous in that they're just using gimmicks to try and get people to read it. But beside the point, let's focus on 25. I did feel like things were a little rushed to tie up loose ends with Jeff John's run. We are back again to Arthur. Is he, does he want to be king? Is he going to be king? Can he be king? All these questions that we've sort of dealt with before. And that's why I loved Throne of Atlantis so much is I thought we kind of answered that. So it's a little frustrating that we're still there, but they do a lot of the mythology associated with Atlantis, like the seven seas, and that the old king, Atlantan, or uh, Atlan, is obviously still mad with what happened, and he doesn't like Arthur because of the family issues, and I like that, but it just ties up really quick and neat at the end, and there's a really kind of cheesy sideline with Mera, and Neris is going to do his own thing. What I really, 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 really liked about this book, though, was the after effect, the epilogue, in that we re revisit Orm, we find out where he is, and it leads what I obviously think is to the next storyline, picking right up. I hope that's the way it goes. I hope it's going this route because I think tying in the seven seas and that mythology is going to be really interesting. I hope it goes that way. This one, I'm only going to give it three out of five nerd skulls because it just felt rushed, tied up. Jeff Johns is done. Okay, let's move on. I wish it could have been better. It was not bad, but it wasn't great. So th three out of five Nerd Skulls. Hey there guys, Kevin here with my comic reviews for this week. I got to read Star Wars Legacy number nine. And um, I'm, I'm enjoying this book. And the last couple issues are a little like, what's happening? I don't know what to think of this right now. Uh, they were exciting, they were cool, and they had some really interesting story going on, you know, like, Dax all poisoned, like what, oh my god, Montgomery enslaved, what, oh my god, secret army building, like, it's cool, it's been fun, and this issue amped up the, like, the action a little bit, Um it actually got like, it was very reminiscent of like, what you would think Obi-Wan, or like, someone in the main Star Wars universe, like the people everyone loves, with like, what they would be doing, like Jedi's doing secret spy stuff, it was pretty much this whole book, which was cool, well, not the whole book, but most of it, um, so you get that going, and my main thing with this series has been like, I want to know about Ania Solo, I want to know how she's related, what's going on, I want them to build that up, and they're not really giving you any hints on it, so I feel like they're just going to like, they're just introducing you in this world, throwing you into it, getting you more and more involved, and then they're going to explain it. Maybe I'm missing something, I don't know, but I really want to know who this tr chick is, and I'm kind of mad that we don't know, uh, but uh, I enjoyed it, and I think you would too. So I'm going to give it three and a half nerd skulls. It's not a bad score. It's actually a pretty good score, so read it. All right, I got to read Argus, number two. Uh, we get to see Steve Trevor uh, continue to throw down with Deathstroke and his kill crew. 
Uh, all he knows is that he's been told the Justice League is dead, and of course, his main concern is Wonder Woman. He, he basically saves the president from Deathstroke and Copperhead and all these other villains, and we actually learn a lot about Argus in this. It's cool because there's a lot of other nods to different series if you've been reading them, uh, vibe, like what he's doing, like his whole thing with Argus, and uh, a lot of other just rooms that I really like. I really like the idea, of Argus. I know it's basically like S.H.I.E.L.D., but I, I like this idea in this universe. I just hope that this is something that's utilized more when we finish Forever Evil, and it's not just like, oh, hey, there's uh, Steve Trevor hanging out, and he works for this organization we like just see represented through him. So I like the ending to this. Something crazy happens, and I feel like this is a big, big push to Wonder Woman lore. I'm wondering when we're going to see all of this carry over into that. Either way, I'm loving this miniseries. I'm still a giant fan of Forever Evil. If you're reading that, I suggest you pick this up. I'm giving it four out of five Nerd Skulls. So I also got to read Ghostbusters number 10. And we pick up right off the events of Stingy Jack, which was really fun in number nine. And this time we're dealing with a very cool spiritual, uh, not necessarily mythological, but very spiritual religious holiday, Dia de los Muertos. And it's really cool because they're still in New York City. They touch a little bit of the history pre-Hispanics in Mexico. And they move it basically to New York City. And we have ghosts kind of everywhere and the ghosts that we have really aren't reacting to the Ghostbusters weapons the way that the Ghostbusters are used to so that's an interesting twist and they have to use their weapons in different ways and catch these ghosts and it's really fun I really enjoy it the one knock against the book though is it feels like we're doing a lot of uh, monster of the week storylines all contained in one book now I got the feeling that they might be alluding to something bigger what with the stingy jack and then this storyline so I hope so but it would get really old to do Monster of the Week, so I hope it's dealing with more. I love the writing. I think the humor is great. Venkman is one of my favorite characters in there. Egon has a lot of dry humor. I highly recommend you pick up this book. I'm going to go ahead and give it four out of five Nerd Skulls. All right, guys, so I got to read All-Star Western number 25 this week. And uh, I'm not a big All-Star Western reader. I've jumped on a couple issues. I like Jonah Hex. He's actually a really awesome like, he's like Wolverine. Like, he's, that's what he's always reminded me of. That's what I always pick up on. That's why I like him, because he's not on every team, and he doesn't appear in every single book every week and month. Like, he's, it, he still has that attitude and that character, and he's a lot older. Uh, but, but, you know, it's whatever. It's, you know, some people don't dig it. Some people do whatever. Um, I happen to like the character, and I was actually not aware that they brought him into the future, or into normal times, um, and that he was hanging out with Constantine. But that was really cool. It was actually a really cool like, change of pace to just jump into this issue and kind of see that going on. Um, story was pretty sweet too, uh, with Constantine kind of like being a douche or whatever, being Constantine, I guess. And uh, uh, Swamp Thing makes an appearance and it's kind of cool to see him like kind of show up somewhere else. You know, he's usually in a swamp or whatever. And he looks like all ugh, seaweedy and gross, but he's in the desert and it's a cactus, which was actually like really small detail that meant a lot to me because it was really, like this writer and artist put a lot of thought into that. So cool, good job, uh, Gray and Palamedi and Moriart, because you guys were awesome on this whole entire book. Um, I don't know anything that's going on in the story. I mean, th th this issue, yeah, but like m overall, I don't know what's going on, but it was still easy to follow and it was still entertaining. So for that, I'm gonna give it four out of five nerd schools. All right, what's going on, nerds? I got to read Black Science number one by Rick Remender, who happens to be one of my absolute favorite comic book writers. This is a brand new image book, and it is weird as all hell, but I love it. I, I love when he does sci-fi. Fear Agent is one of my absolute favorite uh, comic books ever. And this is, the, just the themes of it is very much what the title is, Black Science. You're not left with a lot of answers at the end of this book, but the ending definitely intrigued me enough to have me keep going and reading. Uh, that's the thing about sci-fi with me. At the, at the beginning, I'm always very confused because, you know, they kind of just jump into it. But there's a lot of intrigue in this. There's a lot of the mystery behind what's going on. And I, I can't wait to see just the full scope of everything. But the, like I said, it ends with this awesome little like, what? So I'm going to have to pick up the next issue. The artwork is beautiful. I highly suggest picking this up. Pick it up now before you regret it when it's like 
12 issues down and everyone's talking about it and you haven't read it yet. Black Science, number one, gets five out of five Nerd Skulls. All right, guys, so I get to read Hawkeye number 14. And you know me, you know, this is my favorite person ever. And this was actually a Kate Bishop issue, uh, not a Clint Barton issue, who is my dude. But Kate Bishop's still awesome. And what Matt Fraction's doing with their relationship and kind of like them as people, them as the same person, them as the same like superhero, I should say, um, is really interesting and cool. Like, you know, she is Hawkeye, but she's not. She was an Avenger, but she isn't any like she kind of was an Avenger, and now she's completely not an Avenger. So it's it's really weird, and she's in LA, and it's it's just this awesome, cool little story of, of her. Like I mean, it's setting up other stuff. There's a cool reveal at the end, and you, there's these flowers that she needs to find in the entire issue for an awesome gay couple, which is another really cool thing about this issue. Uh, but either way, you find a big reveal that this is what this was for. And it's actually really messed up, you know, if, you, if you're actually familiar with what's going on in the series, um, just because of who shows up. And it's really interesting. I'm not going to spoil it at all for anyone because it's freaking awesome. And overall, this issue was just really good. There's a lot of cool, like, one-liners and just really interesting, like, panel setups and the action's cool and it, everything. Everything about it is just really, really cool. And I wish more comic books were like this. Actually, no, I don't wish more comic books were like this because this is the best one. And if everything was like this, it wouldn't be the best one anymore. So this is going to be a 5 out of 5 Nerd Skull book. All right, guys. I got to read Saga number 16 by Brian K. Vaughn. I love this book. I, I love him as a writer, and I'm glad he's gotten back in to his own series, you know, because he had Why the Last Man. Now that that's done, I just, I, I'm glad he's doing this again. This issue kind of backtracks a little bit to show us what has been happening the last couple is, uh, I believe it's the end of the... Second trade, if you've been reading that, uh, something big happens, and these following issues have all kind of filled in that gap of what's happened to these characters and why everyone is here. Uh, you get to learn a lot about our little group of renegades, and I really like just the dynamic between all the different characters. Uh, I, just, I, I have a lot of hope for this series, and I, it's only 16 issues in, but I, I feel like it's just going to get absolutely outrageous and just a lot of fun. It's a beautiful book. I highly suggest you read it. I'm giving it five out of five Nerd Skulls. All right, guys, so I get to read Uncanny Avengers number 14 as well this week. And this is my favorite Marvel book, hands down. That's like a regular ongoing series. Infinity's awesome right now. There's been a lot of cool things. Hawkeye's a really good series as well. But this has me the most excited every week, every month. Like... The fact that it doesn't come out every week is kind of depressing to me, but I understand because it's a, it's it's like a masterpiece. It's like it needs the time <laughs> to really be made properly. Uh, story wise, though, it's epically nuts. Like Infinity is supposed to be like the big thing going on. You think no, oh, and all this stuff, and it very much feels that way. And this week I review that also, uh, so check that out. But it's this just feels so much bigger. I don't know why. Maybe it's because it's X-Men and the Avengers, but like Infinity's Earth, and the universe completely. I don't know, but like the time stream is essentially destroyed and Kang is rebuilding his like secret army. I don't know what the hell's going on with that, but then all hell breaks loose on, on Earth because no one knows what, out, when, out, blah, no one knows what anyone else is doing at all. And it's probably the coolest and most saddest thing ever just because the story plays out so good so well you're just like oh my god no oh my god no oh my god no like just so many times you do that and the fact that it can get that out of you that many times and still be effective and still be like good story and the ending of it it was awesome too and didn't lose anything until then ah oh, just an awesome experience a great roller coaster ride deserves five out of five nerd skulls and especially steve mcniven is drawing this book hands down one of the best books out there right now Check it out. Hey fellow nerds, Jasper here, and I just got done reading Cataclysm Ultimate Comics X-Men. This is a great intro to the Cataclysm series where Galactus ends up in the Ultimate Universe. Uh, you get X-Men, or at least the team's point of view, uh, with everything that's going on, but what you don't necessarily get is Galactus. Just like uh, Cataclysm the Ultimates, uh, you get the perspective, but Everything is going on in different perspectives with the whole team. And ultimately, they end up in a uh, other dimension 
which is really cool because the big payoff at the very end of the issue is the fact that you get to see a familiar face in the Marvel Universe who we haven't seen in a while. So definitely check it out. Uh, you'll get a smirk on your face after you realize who it is. I'm giving this issue a 3.5 out of 5 Nerd Skulls. All right, guys, so I got to read Infinity number six, the last of this epic, epic series. Uh, man, I, I was really excited for this whole issue. Um, the buildup the last couple weeks has been really cool. Avengers and new Avengers kind of explaining what's been happening with the individual teams and the Illuminati and yada, 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 kind of just building up all the story. And if you saw my last review for Avengers or new, new Avengers, no, Avengers, um, you saw how awesome it was. And if you read the book, you saw how awesome it was and how cool it was. This picks up like right after that. Like you get a little bit of hint, like see what, what happened and all the big tie-ins that kind of leads into it. And then boom, just like, what? Captain America shows up, everyone shows up. They're starting to fight, blah, 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 blah. Everything goes down. And then we get like just these crazy, crazy, just twi not twists, not necessarily twists, I wouldn't say that, but just the way things play out is just, so smart, so awesome. Of course the heroes fight and, and you know, everyone goes, everything gets thrown down. And I mean, it's, it's a knockout brawl for a good little while. Thor shows up being the awesome God of Thunder that he is. I mean, Hulk has a son put on him, which is pretty sweet. Like the weight of us, it's, it's nuts. You gotta read it. Uh, I don't wanna talk about any more of it. Uh, you just need to get into it because Jim Chung draws the entire thing and it's beautiful. And the ending of it is, it's not a cliffhanger or a, a, a kind of like story thread just left completely open for everyone to find out. The story threads that are left open are the ones that are actually leading into, leading into legitimate storylines and, and books and things that are supposed to be carrying on. All brand new things, which is awesome because the last couple of years it hasn't been like that. Brian Michael Bendis. Um, so it's nice to see that this story could end and it, you know it's gonna continue somewhere else, you know something else is gonna happen out of this. And yeah, I expect that from this because it's huge, but I don't have to read 40 million books afterwards. I literally only need to read one. I mean, if you're reading Avengers and New Avengers, and you, then you, if you're not reading those, then you probably have to pick those up because they're awesome. Uh, but one main book that they're pushing, which is a huge ending part to it, and it, it's, if you don't wanna read this, I don't understand. You need to read Inhumanity once you finish this, because that's what I'm craving for right now. So I'm giving this five out of five Nerd Skulls, because it's one of my favorite event books in the last couple years. And let's see how uh, Forever Evil turns out, because uh, that's pretty much the only other thing I'm looking to see how it plays out. So let me know what you guys think about this book in the comments below.